country. The Lord said, you seek correctly, for I shall watch to make my word come to pass. Somebody in this season, God will make his word over your life come to pass. Amen. Tell your neighbor, he has answered my prayer. He has answered my prayer. Say like you believe it. He has answered my prayer. Say like a Nigerian, he has answered my prayer. Oh. He has my Hey! 
convention is to show you how you can become a proof producer how you can age as a distinguished person am I am I making sense I don't want you to age as an ordinary person I met Christ at the age of 10, and my uncle persecuted me, gave me the beating that Pan Beaters give to Pan, and drove me out of his house, and said to a man, you'll be nobody in this life. And I said, I have just found how to solve the problems of life. Look at this. My uncle asked me, do you know how old you are? <laughs> Does it matter? Anointing has nothing to do with age. And this night, I don't care how young you are. God will show you how to solve the problems of life. God will show you how to marry. I got to America with fresh anointing from Nigeria. And said to some crippled people, stand up without prayer. And they stood up. The girl who brought me to the service said to me, Ma, if I don't marry you, nobody will marry you. I will shoot you and shoot myself. I was excited. A white girl is proposing to me. And God said, Oh, must run away. Just run. The fastest you can run. God, God will teach you how to marry, who to marry, when to marry. God shocked me when he said to me, my, my foolishness is more than your wisdom. When I told my brother I was going to marry this, my wife and girlfriend, he cried. 
He said, all the problems you gave to our father, this girl will help you pay. But I was shocked. For 30 years of our marriage, she never talked back at me. At that tender age, God said to me, Ma, you never borrow money. You owe no man. You will not even lend money. I'll show you how to generate wealth. It's now uh, 69 years. God taught me mysteries. I have never borrowed money. My wife is here as a witness. I have never owed anybody money. I never begged for money. As a principal, I don't beg for anything. If you want to kill me, sure, go ahead. I don't beg. Why? I know how to move God to move my enemies out of the way. And I'm here to share with you what God has taught me. When doctors gave me one hour to leave, I went to see my doctor, and he brought me and began to cry. I said, Daddy, you have only one more hour to live. Can you shut up your mouth? Men who walk with God, learn from God how to solve the problems of life. And I'm here that God may teach you how to solve the problems of life. My wife with the governor arranged for a flight to London. I said to her, Madam, if I have only one hour to live and you fly me to London, that means I'll die six times before I reach London. Two of us, who is crazy? <laughs> she asked me, are, are you ever rattled by anything? No, when you know God sufficiently and fittingly and adequately, nothing will rattle you. Did you hear me? Yes. Beginning tonight, nobody can rattle you again. Yes. On my way to board the aircraft, I told her, Madam, when you cook food tomorrow, please uh, serve my own food because I'll soon be back. She looked at me and I asked her, asked her Are you well? You, are you well? There is nothing greater under the sun than to learn how to walk with God. He will show you how to solve every problem. Me and brethren, I went to London and came back. The doctors told me they couldn't find any sickness in my body. That uh, I don't, the only thing they found was that I do not know how to rest. I said it means death had rejected me. Do I have anybody who like death to reject you? I'll teach you. This year, they dragged me back. The doctor said the same thing. In fact, they said, my body does not respond to medical textbooks. I have brought people who help me pass on to you things that can help you age as a distinguished person. On the 26th day of this month, members of my village said they are going to honor me for building three, I mean six, for tiring six streets for them and building two hospitals for them and building a polytechnic for them and building a college of nursing and midwifery without asking anybody for money without borrowing money from anybody. I would like God to corrupt you to this great team where you can turn your family around and do the impossible. Do I have any volunteer? Are you sure? Jesus came that we may walk with him through life. 
and I'm only co-opting you to join us. Let him be your partner. He's a master teacher. He's a great healer. Uh, he is stupendously rich. <laughs> My mother saw me drive a brand new car and came to you and said, I didn't know a preacher could, could buy a car. So you are now rich. Give me money. Ma, how much do you want? She stated. I, I don't have money in this house. But I'll tell God this night. Tomorrow, he'll bring money. She said, wait, wait, wait. The important thing is, do you know you don't have the house in our village? And yet, when you appear on television, you smile like a Cheshire cat, a rich man. You are hopelessly poor. Man, you want me to build a house in the village? That was 1978. I'll tell God this night. Tomorrow morning, he'll bring that money. She said, this is why I don't like you and the Pentecostals. You people talk like people who are sick mentally. You know, that, that request from my mother brought me to a place of new discovery. The next day, after we had prayed, a man came all the way from Abba. Said he was sleeping, God woke him up and told him I needed money and how much I needed. He said he had never been to you before. God showed him how to get to a house and counted this money and gave me. I prayed for him and blessed him. Went back to my mother, she showed her the money. She showed me when she asked me, did you tell God you were going to build a house? This money is too small. Can't, can't buy enough plots of land. Go back. Tell that God I, I am waiting for you to come back with real money. We returned. The same man came back with more money than I had seen before. And I returned to my mother. The old woman shocked me when she asked me, are you a preacher or an arm robber? Where did you get such money? Do I have anybody who would like God to be your teacher and show you how to create wealth? Raise your hand, let me see. That's why we are here. We are not here to waste your time. I am going to demand that your life will not be the same again. My doctors came to see me and they said my backbone has shifted. I should come for surgery. That was just a few months ago. And I said, no. That's what to call option one. Option two, that I can lay my hand on any sick part of my body and command that sickness to disappear. So they said, okay, pray. I laid my hand on myself and said to the bone, go back to your assigned place. You are not positioned here by God to be a truck pusher. Go back to your assigned place in Jesus' name. Do you know, by the time we woke up the next morning, the bone had returned. <laughs> My, up to today, the doctors are still asking me to tell them what and what God did to produce that result. And I have said no, that this is for only the born again Christians. I'm in the Bible says we shall lay our hand on the sick. But if you are the sick, you can lay your hand on yourself. And this God will heal you. He didn't say them in well. Yeah. Two of my children were born crippled. Everybody mocked me, including my wife. My wife showed me one day when she said, if these crippled children were another woman's children, you would have prayed until heaven would come down. But because they are my children, you are busy doing other things. My mother saw me and said, Mr. Preacher, did I hear your children cannot walk? Why can't you bring him, bring them to me? I'll take them to a native doctor. 
Ma, if I walk into a native doctor tonight, the place will be on fire. She said, I know. Sometimes I think they are not a human being. <laughs> The day my wife gave birth to our second child, the nurse asked me, that's your crippled son, is he still crippled? And I said, yes. She mocked me and laughed, and I said, Madam, stop, because of your laughter, that boy shall walk tonight. I had a dream to bring you to a place where you can command heaven to answer your questions. Do you know, I asked God, Father, what do I do? And God said, raise a song. Oh, you know I like songs. I went from song to song, from song to the boy from under anointing. And slept off. Woke up. And said to me, Daddy, while I was sleeping, angels removed my bones and gave me stronger bones. I can walk. I asked him to demonstrate that he can walk. He walked and danced. I ran to my wife where she was in the hospital and told her the story. I was shocked she did not betray her emotion. She just said to me, a preacher is not allowed to tell lies. But if this boy walks, I'll give you a goat. So I picked my pen and wrote the word goat, master to sign under. I want to declare, you, if you are ready, can be a miracle worker. When my wife returned from the hospital and saw the boy, she began to cry, Madam. You didn't promise me tears, you promised me a goat. What is a goat? She shocked me when she asked me to give her money. We'll wait to buy the goat. This was the principal of the college. <laughs> Madam, I'm going to your father this night to demand he takes your place and pay the bill. I drove through the night, got to our village, met the father, rich man. The man asked me, you mean that boy walks? And I said, yes. He said, go to the backyard. Any goat of the church, speak. In my foolishness, I went and picked the biggest goat, not knowing the goat were pregnant. <laughs> what I'm saying is, we are here that God will show each one of us how to solve the problems of life. How to marry the right person. Amen. How to marry at the right time. Amen. It took me one month of fasting every day for God to tell me who to marry. One month. Morning, night, afternoon. And I, God said to me, this is the best girl I can find for you. My senior brother saw me and began to cry. He said, I heard you have proposed to that girl. She doesn't know how to cook. She can't sweep. She can't do anything. Why would God so punish you with this kind of choice? No, my brother was wrong. It is his wife who cannot cook. His wife who cannot sweep. Not this one I have. Everybody wants to marry <laughs> We had a good drama. Uh, Reverend Jerry came with a friend who saw a smashingly gorgeously mesmerizingly bewitchingly pretty girl and went after her. My, my question was, have you asked God his will for you? Because the problem this girl is carrying, you can't handle it. Nigerians are very funny and stupid. They go always after pretty girls. 
Every pretty girl does not want to be insulted by any husband. Am I correct? No girl wants you to beg you for money before you give her money. Am I correct? When a girl cooks for you, a pretty girl cooks for you, and you eat and, and, and lick your fingers without thanking her, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. There are too many things about pretty girls. Therefore, if you must marry, allow God who knows tomorrow. God who knows everything to direct you. Are you still here? Do you want to hear more? Because I want you to end your life on earth as a distinguished person. With Jesus always on your side to instruct and direct you, you will never fail. Well, I have been blessed by God with too many daughters and sons. You can't believe it. In 1972, I was the first missionary to the Bible University. A girl who gave her life to Christ said to me, you will always be my father. <laughs> a young man proposed to her, and she said to the young man, you must go to your, wash my father's car, sweep his house, iron his dresses, do it for five days. If he approves of you, I'll marry you. You know what the boy said? The boy said, I'll do more than that. He came to you was was in my car. This is a medical doctor and a consultant. After five days, I told him, heaven can't even find a better man than you. And I got married. It had been a wonderful marriage. Allow God to show you what to do to reach your appointed place in life. We all must stop these our many mistakes. Stand where God can be your instructor and teacher and prepare you for a great life. Don't be in a hurry. Let God be your teacher. Anybody on my side? How many of you want God to be your teacher, your instructor, that you may live a great life? Uh, with Jesus' uh, joy and the Pentecostal clap of faith, This is wait though, this is the only the only son I have. The, wait, 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 who is doing hey, stop? You know I've been wanting to quarrel with you. You don't flog instruments. You cause them to bring out music. I brought this musical instrument to Eastern Nigeria. So I give account to God. Therefore, be careful what you do. This is the only son I have who is a bishop, but also on government salary. And God blessed him with a, a wonderful wife. I am not even happy he didn't come with the wife. Whoever will be close to me, the first law is to love your wife, care for her, respect her, celebrate her, and make her your queen. Anyway, he will, he will answer to that. But with the clap of friends, let's bring Archbishop. In my song, to the microphone. How many of you will promise me now, whatever he ask me to do, you will do it? Let me see your hand up. I want you to be a proof producer. I want you to be a miracle worker. We were in Bo 
2,500 people were healed without prayer. They said I was a juju man. Juju cannot buy juju. I want God to bless you with knowledge of how problems can be turned into promotion. How God can turn your lamentation into laughter and turn your disgrace into grace. Not every man is a, a, a husband material. There are people when you see them, you're wrong. Because they can beat you silly. And a man who can beat his wife can kill her. But if you come to this fellowship, anybody who beats you, I'll give up my dinner for 200 and I forgot to punish him. I'll chase him to his grave and go beyond his grave. Because in the eyes of God, you are precious. And whoever will marry you must see you as a precious girl. Are you on my side? Come on, can we all stand up? And you will take the bomb and bomb. I'm in my yom, I'm mamming kwe. And you will take the Jehovah. Ami mo yo ami kwe Ami mo yo mami mo yo mami mo yo mami kwe Ani owo eje nte jihova Ami mo yo ami kwe Ani owo te to mo me bo Ami mo yo mami kwe Ami mo yo mami kwe Ami mo yo mami kwe Ani owo te to jihova I Whether Satan likes it or not, you are a candidate of multiplied blessings. Yeah. Let's hear from one of my great sons. Celebrate our father. Come on, somebody. Celebrate our mommy. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Daddy, for promoting your sons, especially this year's convention. We will not take it for granted. Thank you, sir. My, my wife was ready to join the car, but my daughter just got a very big job in Cross River and came with three grandchildren. And my wife cannot move because my daughter is out and I'm coming to you. So the three grandchildren are in my bedroom. <laughs> and she has to... Keep them the nursing. We apologize, sir. Thank you for understanding. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can feel there is nothing much here than for you to just lift up your hand and worship God. Say something to the Lord. Our Father has set us up. The fire is already here. I'm mounting on that those wings. I'm mounting on those wings. Just say something to the Lord. Say something to the Lord. Ima Emmanuel. 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 Emmanuel, your name is Lord. 
Ima Emmanuel Emmanuel in this faith thank you for mother in Israel thank you for everyone watching us online thank you for the ears of the hearers bless the tongue of your servant let the word bring forth miracles let the word answer questions solve problems melt mountains elevate valleys in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, the loudest amen begin to testify. The loudest amen begin to celebrate. Put your hand together for Jesus and take your seat. Sit like a king, like a queen. Hallelujah. Genesis 41 verse 14 I'm gonna preach on what is titled you are discharged and acquitted the loudest amen begin to receive that deliverance right now for your finances for your children for your family for your siblings let your amen command the blessing Point to somebody very far from you and tell him you are discharged and acquitted. Genesis 41 verse 14. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. If you say many call is entering your phone in seven days. I see a call. I see a call. It's about to hit your phone. Let your amen confirm that call is coming. Look at your neighbor and tell him a call is coming to my phone. Joseph was called by Pharaoh. And they brought him hastily. Hey, hey. This is good news for someone 
who has been delayed someone who has been kept for so long the lord said i should prophesy if your amen is loud the miracle is coming hastily the blessing is coming in a hurry the victory is coming multiplied god is going to do a quick walk in your life god is going to do a quick walk in your ministry something is coming in a hurry something is coming in a hurry your marriage is coming hot 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 your house shall be built hastily your visa shall be issued hastily receive it in the name of jesus they brought him hastily out of the dungeon and he shaved himself look at your neighbor say begin to look for your baba look at your neighbor are you okay say neighbor begin to locate your baba begin to locate your hair stylish begin to locate your saloon begin to because you are going to carry a new hairstyle after this convention i don't like your amen at all you're about to carry a new hairstyle because he shaved himself <laughs> watch this and change his raiment look at another neighbor say neighbor look for your tailor <laughs> tell him look for your fashion designer talk to your neighbor say neighbor where is your fashion designer where is your tailor begin to locate her begin to locate him because something is about to happen before you enter 2021 god is about to put somebody said fire shaved his head changed his clothes and appeared unto Pharaoh. He was discharged and acquitted. Do you know why they say discharged and acquitted? <laughs> you know, my wife sits in the bench, so I did some small review before I came. <laughs> Do you know why they say discharged and acquitted? Because you can be discharged, but you are not yet acquitted. I'll give you a story. Daddy has already let the cat out of the bag. I serve in Cross River State Government. I'm not from Cross River, I'm from Aquaibu. But I'm in Cross River State Government as a chairman of a very major agency. It's called the Anti Tax Agency. It's a number one agency. We just, I came late because we just finished defending our budget. I went to defend budget. That's why I'm on suit. For many years, I've not worn suit. went to defend budget but I won't tell you the intricacies of defending budget <laughs> hallelujah that's not the story last two weeks or more than two weeks we arrested my boys they are, they are called the anti tax brigade arrested 42 illegal tax collectors in cross river state all within Calabar municipality and Calabar South we work with about 24 policemen Mopo. So they pick 42 illegal tax collectors. Listen to the difference between discharge and acquitted. When we got them, there's a special court set up by the chief judge for these cases to be tried. They are like mobile court. Now those courts work in consonance with Cross State 2015 illegal tax collection or tax exemption law. But because the judiciary, the lawyers, we're like on strike. We had to postpone the arrangement, postpone the prosecution, and uh, discharge them. So they, if you come to Calabar, they are on the street. They are chopping meat pie. 
they are, in, they are eating half with their wife. They have been released from the cell, from the confinement of the police or the court, but they don't know, or maybe they know, they have not yet been acquitted of the charges that was on their head until they prove themselves innocent they cannot be acquitted they can be rearrested and the lord said to me the miracle of your deliverance today if your amen is loud you are not just discharged you shall be acquitted you shall be acquitted you shall be acquitted i see you discharged i see you acquitted no weapon form against you shall prosper for there is now therefore romans chapter 8 verse 1 no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh for the law of life in christ jesus has delivered me from the law of sin and death after your amen you are delivered you are set free in the name of jesus your finance is free your marriage free somebody shall follow Sit. what is this church this church is the opposite of church before anybody is prosecuted before the law he you must the prosecuting counsel must file up charges against him what are charges charges are the legal component that implicates the defendant the substances of the law that holds him the charges the charges are the evidences that form the substances of the case so you are not going to hold somebody because you like him or hate him you are going to hold somebody because the law holds him that's why the bible says in isaiah 49 verse 24 it said even the lawful captive of the mighty after your amen shall be delivered tonight the prayer of the terrible one shall be set free tonight whether you are right hearing my voice or you are watching it online wherever you go wherever you are God says the Lord the charges against your father against your family against your blood group against your village against your person after your amen you have been set free you are free you are free you are free for if the son of man sets you free ye are free indeed john chapter 10 verse 10 the devil has come to steal and to kill and to destroy but jesus said i have come that he may have life and have it abundantly somebody shout hallelujah what are charges i'm trying to give you some explanation so that when you pray tonight you pray nullifying absolving yourself of every charge because revelation chapter 12 verse 10 bible says that the devil is what the accuser of the brethren who is the accuser the devil what is he accusing he brings up charges against you sometimes charges that predated your two three generation he invokes them 
from your family archives and use them against you. But thank God for the blood of Jesus that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. The person that said amen tonight, every handwriting of ordinance, Colossians chapter 2, 14, every handwriting of ordinance that was written against your family, that stood against you, after your amen, it shall be counseled forever. It is counsel, it is counsel, it is counsel, it is counsel by the blood of Jesus. Somebody say yes. Mark chapter 10 verse 47. Mark chapter 10 verse 47 in 48. Bartimaeus shouted. Jesus on the way to Jericho. Every other person was shouting. But when his own shout was more than their shout. Because hatred is based on jealousy. And jealousy is derived from envy. And envy is a juniper of ignorance. That God can also bless you. You are envious because you don't know your purpose in life. You are jealous and therefore you begin to plan the evil because you don't know what to carry. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So he began to shout. And you know what pain them? I'll tell you. The things that pain them is that he shouted more than them. Another thing that pained them is that they were shouting Jesus of Nazareth. But he shouted something different. He didn't say Jesus of Nazareth. The Bible says in verse 47, And when he heard them saying Jesus of Nazareth, he said Jesus son of David. And when he heard, what were they saying? Oh church, talk to me. This is my father's house. When he heard them say what? What did he say? Are they the same thing? What is the cause of envy? When your clothes is different from somebody's clothes. When your children is different from somebody's children. When your job is different from somebody's job. They were saying Jesus of Nazareth. And Batimo said, I no go join you now. He now shouted his own. What was his own? Jesus, son of David. There's no time to explain that. Jesus of Nazareth was a derogatory name at that time. They were calling him. So it was a human, commonized, traditional, villagized name. Jesus of Nazareth. But Jesus, son of David, was a covenant name. Because Jesus is sitting on the throne of David. It was his covenant name. That, so when they were saying Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus ignored them because it was a generalized statement, derogative statement. He passed them. It's like saying, Emma, 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 I will be your man. I will pass you. But he said, son of David. That's why Jesus stopped. So it was not the shouting of Batimos that made Jesus stop. It was the name Batimos called him. Let me tell you, in worship, in worship, it is not how you shout more than me. It is the idiosyncratic, individualistic, personalized words I use on God that attract his blessing to me. Not just the dance. We will all shout, we will all dance, but my revelation of him, my connection and relationship of him, when I begin to call him, and I make him poor, when I begin to help me, borrow some, borrow some. I didn't mean them. Don't stop, don't stop. Those names that I invoke is what brings blessing to my life. It is my level of revelation that activates my worship life. While they were saying, 
Jesus of Nazareth, he said, no, I will not join the bandwagon. I will call him Jesus, the son of David. Have mercy on me. Jesus, stop. You know why Jesus stopped? There is a name somebody calls you and you know that the person knows you. If I pass here and all of you say, Bishop, Bishop, I will go and enter my car. I am not just bishop. There are many bishops here. But if you call me a name, they call me in my village. I won't tell you because you will go and try it. <laughs> this, I was telling pastor, I said, I saw you in my village. He said, how? I said, that person you came for burial is my mother's auntie. I mean, my auntie, my mother's senior old sister. He said, what? There's a name they call me in the village. If I'm passing in a crowd, everybody says, bishop, bishop, I won't stop. Why would I stop? There are about how many bishops in Nigeria? But if you call that name, I will stop. Not only stop, I will order my protocol to bring you. And I will ask you, where are you from? And you will speak in my local language. And I will let you know that, oh, which primary school? And you will mention the primary school. Which compound? And you mention the compound. Why? I feel that you know me. Child of God, may God reveal himself to you. Paul said, Paul said, that I may know him. That I may know him. What does knowledge do? Knowledge brings power. I may know him and the power. Because knowledge brings power. You know what they did to Bartimaeus in verse 48? Look at verse 48. Mark 10, 48. When they notice that he has gotten the attention, he has gotten the revelation. Matthew, Mark chapter 10, verse 48. Can the computer bring it up? When they notice that his own way of calling is different, the Bible says, and many began to charge him that he might hold his peace. I know you've never noticed that word charge. Many began to do what? To charge him. What is charge? A charge is a legal component of a case that ropes in somebody and makes him not qualified. There are some of you here as you keep praying, I counsel every charge that they are brought against your life. And many charge him that he should hold his peace. But watch out this. But he cried the more a great deal. What did he cry? Jesus, thou son of David. When you have a revelation of God, it doesn't matter what people say about you. When you have understanding and revelation of worship of God, who God is, when God is a personalized, you are not moved by what people do to you. So they charge him. They charge him. I love what Jesus said. Jesus said, no matter your charges, bring him to me. Bring him to me. Pharaoh called for Joseph. Jesus called for Bartimaeus. After your amen, a major call is about to enter your phone. I see. If you can clap your hands and shout amen, a call is coming. A call that will change your life. A call that will turn you around. A call that will give you a place in life. Somebody shout amen. sent and brought Joseph out. When you read Genesis 39 verse 9, you see the charges that brought Joseph into prison. Genesis 39 verse 9. You see that witchcraft woman. What was her name? Potiphar's wife that rolled out demonic and satanic charges against brother Joseph. Now, let me tell you something before we proceed. Witches don't harm until they summon you. They don't summon you 
until somebody has accused you. And they don't accuse you until there are charges against you. If you doubt me, ask Naboth, how did you die? Naboth will tell you that a certain witchcraft woman brought two false witnesses, laid evil charges against him. And they packed the trump up charges and they kill him. Enemy cannot harm you till they accuse you. Every accusing finger pointing on your children, pointing on your family, pointing on your business. If your amen is the loudest, your deliverance has come right now. Receive, receive your deliverance. In Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. In Mount Zion, there shall be holiness. And the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. Somebody shout amen. amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. You are discharged and acquitted. Amen. Look at your neighbor say you are acquitted. Amen. What is acqu acquittance? What is acquittance? I'll tell you. To be acquitted, watch this, means to be released and relieved and declared not guilty of an offense or a crime or an obligation to be declared not guilty to be relief to be released tonight under the anointing of my father i hear the holy ghost said 400 people with the loudest amen have been acquitted have been released have been set free I love the case of Joseph in Genesis 39 verse 9 it was the wife of Potiphar that brought the charges but in Genesis 41 verse 14 it was Pharaoh himself what do you learn you learn here that authority and power works by hierarchy it works by hierarchy that means what a DPO does a, a deputy commissioner of police can overturn it and what a deputy commissioner of police does a commissioner of police can overturn it and what a commissioner of police does help me somebody a deputy an AIG can overturn and what an AIG does somebody help me here a DIG has the power and the jurisdiction to circumvent or declare null and void. And what the DIG does, somebody help me again. The IG, he can counsel it. And they still hope. And what the IG does, the commander in chief, he can counsel it. Is there still hope? And what the commander in chief does, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the ancient of days, he can declare it nullified. Therefore tonight, in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost, I declare you discharged and acquitted. You are free from sin. You are free from death. You are free from sickness. You are free from satanic poverty. You are free from frustration. You are free from failure. I declare you discharged and acquitted. Discharged from the devil. Acquitted from every covenant. Causes of yesteryears that has held you bound. Everything that's blinded you, everything that's covered you, everything that's encumbered you, by the blood of Jesus, I declare you free. I declare you free in the name of Jesus. God said to Pharaoh, through Moses, let my people go tonight. The loudest amen, you are released. You are released. 
you are released you are free free from sin free from sickness free from shame free from poverty free from untimely death free from disappointment free 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 you are free indeed whom the son of God has made free shall be free in death see now I'll give you two more examples we go. it's not a place to preach a long message <laughs> I told you a story some years ago a professor of aeronautical engineering in the uh, University of Lagos you see remember the story he was going to Ibadan to present a lecture but before that lecture he has been to several conferences and was very tired so tired and fatigued an idea came to him he had a very intelligent driver very good driver you know these government drivers they can be well dressed so he had a deal with the driver at the gate of UI. He said, you are going to come to the back of the car. You take my suit and wear. And I'm going to go to the steering. When we arrive, they will receive you. My lecture is on paper. You just read it. I'm very tired. So the driver accepted. They arrived at the symposium. Hall was filled with other professors. All the heads of departments and dean. Students of science and technology. Driver climbed up, read very well, very, very well, very well. But as he was about to leave the podium, he did not know that uh, there was room for questions. <laughs> so they said, no, 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 wait, uh, uh, prof, they call him prof, prof, wait, 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 wait. The driver, the, the prof was sitting somewhere. So they fired him. The first question, he was a very intelligent man. He laughed. He said, you are, you mean of all I've lectured you? That's the simplest question you can ask me. That's too simple. Even my driver can answer. Driver! <laughs> driver! So the driver, the driver came. He broke it down. He gave map. He put sign. Square root times 55 times. People say, which kind of driver is this? They, they, they say, well, maybe it's educated driver. They fire him, second question, same thing. He laughed, he said, you I, 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 am I like a joke to you? You mean you, mean you don't respect? I look at how small is your question. Even my driver can answer, driver! <laughs> driver came, he pieces it, he drew it, he brought all the grad broke down, all the terminology, even more than the prof was doing <laughs> After three, four, so next question was, sir, please, who is the driver among you? Is it you? <laughs> that is how the matter was exposed. So I came here as a professor, but if you have more problem than what I preach, see. <laughs> mm. <laughs> because... <laughs> You mean all these small cripples? Uh, no, no, no. My, my <laughs> God says you are discharged and acquitted. The God that freed Peter, the God that freed Paul and Silas. The God that freed Israel, he said to Pharaoh, let my people go. That same God is here tonight. Rise on your feet and point your hand to this altar. And can you speak in tongues and pray in tongues for one minute? Lift your hand, point to the altar. God that brought Joseph out of the dungeon. Bring me out of this mess. Bring my family out of this mess God of Dr. Umaukbai we call on you tonight somebody pray somebody pray somebody pray I 
am discharged and acquitted. I'm free from all the covenants, all the causes. Potiphar's wife put Joseph in prison. But Pharaoh brought him out. A greater power is bringing you out tonight. A greater power is bringing you out tonight. Jesus name two more prayers before I sit down lift your two hands and with your mouth say oh Lord my God you died on the cross to pay the price for my sins to redeem me from sickness to deliver me from poverty tonight you that brought Joseph out of that dungeon you that cancel the words of Potiphar's wife. You that discharged and acquitted Joseph. In the name above every name. Save me now. Heal me now. Deliver me now. Clap your hands and pray. Lord save me. But Timothy shouted. Jesus. Son of David. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. name in Jesus name final prayer before my father comes to bless you you are going to pray God who shaved Joseph's hair who put new dress on him make my life new as I cross this December as I enter the new year change my hairstyle Change my house, change my car, change my life, change my bank account, change my dress. Clap your hands and pray. Change. I want to see a change. I want to see a change. Somebody pray. I want to see a change. God, God, take away shame. Take away shame. Take away. Take away shame. Take away shame. mighty name father if prison warders can obey Pharaoh let all the angels and demons and the elements of this world listen to the amen this person is shouting now of this year. God of 
signs and wonders. Let the loudest amen receive a phone call he has never received. Let him receive an alert he has never received. Let him receive an email he has never received. Change our stories. Cancel our days. Remove the charges. Take away our sins. Wash us with your blood. Give us a new year. We shall not die. We shall live to declare the works of God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Let me see the person that will jump and shout amen. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor, say, locate your Baba, locate your tailor. Look at your neighbor, say, locate your Baba, locate your tailor. Ask him, what style, what style? What style are you showing? Bongo, what are you showing? Saika, Maxi, what do you want? Talk to your neighbor, say, what style? What style are you going? Tell him what style. Tell him I'm about to celebrate. I'm about to jubilate. I'm coming out of the dungeon. Dungeon of poverty. Dungeon of sin. Dungeon of sickness. Tell your neighbor I'm coming out. I'm coming out in a haste. Coming out in a hurry. Coming out well shaved. Well dressed well perfumed so that those who mock you before they shall not recognize you they shall not recognize you you know there's an haircut there's an haircut you carry and nobody recognize you again the women women there's a way you will twist that hair and even your mother will say who is that is somebody here a man elbow your neighbor elbow your neighbor say neighbor in the next few days you will not recognize me again you will not notice me again. I would have been transformed. I would have been transported and catafired. I would have been differently motivated. I would have been renovated. I would have been reactivated. I... Make a joyful noise. Oh! Ask your neighbor, neighbor, where is Potiphar's wife when you are coming out of prison? Where is she? Where is she? Where is she? Shame on the devil. Shame on the principalities of your village. Shame on the demons that try to hold you down. They can't hold you down. God is superior to them. Greater than the greatest. Wiser than the wisest. Stronger than the strongest. Is bringing you out in the ass. In the next 13 days, you shall come out. An alert. An alert. You know, you know, there's an alert that kills your battery. You don't know. There's an alert that kills battery. Battery. Bah. Aya Yakubo, Eniawo Aya Yakubo, Tabasi Aya Yakubo, Meniawo Aya Yakubo, Aya Yakubo. Cards. This is a deposit to the barber 
and the uh, who again? The designer, the teller. Pull out 10,000, pull out 5,000, pull out 50,000, 1,000, 500 naira. Pull it out and lift it up. Let me pray. Then we are going to sing that song that God is beautiful in glory. Amen. Pull it out, lift it up. Our Father in the Lord will be blessing us. Pull it up. Say, oh Lord my God. This is the deposit. To my canopy that I'm going to hire. This is a token. Of appreciation for the coming celebration. Of my discharge and acquittal. I saw it by faith. As I dance, I shall dance on that day. I will testify to your glory. In Jesus' name. Come on. Ay, ay, Akubo. Somebody read throughout the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 40. Let's be fast. Choir, can you give me 12 people? Let them step out here. They will serve us now. Yes, anybody? Wait. Come, 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 come. I said chapter 1, verse 40. Read with grace and meaning. A man with leprosy Good. came to him and begged him on his knees. If you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus was indignant. He reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said. Be clean. Immediately the, the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. I, I don't know whether you have noticed there was no struggle. Where there is power, there be no struggle. I and my chief of staff, uh, Pastor Joe Linus, we were in Okigwe Stadium. And I said to the cripples, how many were there? Huh? 
82. I said to the cripples, I have not prayed for you. But I demand you all stand up to our prayer. Mm. People were asking, what did he say? I said, stand without prayer. When they stood up, the crowd went to the sack with joy. Because we are late, I'm going to make the miracle service very short. There are 48 people with different kinds of sicknesses and problems. And problems. When I will speak, the power of God will envelop you and overwhelm you. You are going to fall on the floor like a pregnant night nurse. And while you're sleeping, only two minutes, <laughs> only, you sleep for three minutes only. I will wake you up. A woman fell under the anointing in my office. When I asked her to stand up, she said, I don't want to wake up again. I want to sleep here. Madam, this is not your house. Stand up. Before you know it, we shall be through with the service for this night. I want to thank my son. That's a beautiful delivery of a beautiful message, beautiful preach. You see, everything about your sickness, Jesus has said to it already. Everything about your poverty, Jesus has said to you, therefore you owe no demon anything anymore. I went to Union Bank with you and asked for five million to help me complete my building. They said they didn't say any money. I said to the manager, I do business with heaven. I pay my tithe regularly. And therefore, when I run out of money, I'll call heaven to bring money. Give God 45 minutes. He'll bring money to that account. The man asked me, are you well? You pay my you, are you well? 45 minutes after, he ran to me and said, sir, sir. Ten million had dropped into your account. I don't know where it came from. Hey, don't ask me where it came from. Just bring me the part I want, which is five million. He, he asked me, can I know you? Like uh, I'm a ghost. The power of God is going to break out and break forth. Stop asking God how. When I... When my doctors found that the bone that moved had returned, they came asking me to tell them how it was done. My friend, it was done between heaven and here. I don't know how it was done, but it's been done. We have only three minutes. And the power of God, we do it with casual ease. Lay your hand, walk out, break up into groups of four. And move into the audience. Be fast. Be fast. We don't have time. I want you to take only one minute and tell God what you want Him to do for you. You must not go home with that sickness, with that problem. What has a beginning has an end. Jesus finished this thing a long time ago and went away. You cannot continue to carry the burden of what was paid for by Jesus. Walk out so helping us, please stand still and face different directions of the crowd. Father, you showed me 48 persons who came with different, diverse problems. And they have suffered more than enough. What has a beginning must have an end. What has gone up must come down. Therefore, those 48 persons, whatever they are, let an angel be assigned to each of them. And let the angel bring healing 
and deliverance and provision to every one of them. Father, they have cried for too long. Therefore, turn their lamentation into laughter. Turn their disgrace into grace. Turn their disappointment into supernatural appointment. Beginning now, this load they have been carrying, they shall carry it no more. Father, on my right hand side, on my left hand side, and in front of me, and at the gallery level, all those who have placed their requests before you, let their prayer now be answered. Yeah. Father, on my right hand side and my left hand side, in front of me, no demon shall fight your children. Yeah. But what they're asking for has been paid for by Jesus and paid completely and paid implicitly. Therefore, no demon has a right to bluff any of them. Father, on my right hand side, on my left hand side, and in front of me, let your power, like a rushing wind, like a melting flute, like the power of an electric power, let it overwhelm every one of them. And let their problems become promotion. And let their tears become laughter. Thou power of God, in the name of Jesus, move! Somebody help. That's number one. That's number four, sir. Number four. That's number five. That's number five. Number six. Number six. Number seven. Number seven. Number eight. Number eight. Number eight. Father, everyone shall be set free. It is a command. It is compulsory. No demon has a right to protest or to raise a voice of opposition. Father, like a mighty wind, on my right hand side and in front of me, on right at the extreme end, let everyone here recognize your peculiar concentrated presence. Let everyone here recognize. You say, where two or three are gathered, you will be there. You are more than two. We are more than two or more than three. Therefore, let the yoke be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Thou power of God, in the name of Jesus, move. How many? Number 11. Number 12. Number 12. Number 13. Number 13. Number 14. Number 14. Emmanuel. 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 Your is God. Your name is God. To where I am, Mama. To where I am, Mama. See, I am a Ezra. Ezra. Jesus to our I am Mama in a miracle service there is a time to pray and a time to receive it is now time to receive I therefore command you to receive your miracle in Jesus name
receive 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 that's 24 24 25. Father, no demon has a right to fight back. No demon has a right to humiliate your children. What has a beginning must have an end. Many of them have suffered more than enough. I therefore demand their freedom. Let them be set free. 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 Let's give the Lord a good clap of from somebody. A good clap of from a good clap of. I want you to feel your body. Feel, feel your body. Anybody that knows you have been healed, God has visited you and honored you. Step out here quickly so I can cover you with prayer. Come quickly, come quickly. Walk like you're happy. A day comes in a man's life that God will turn his lamentation into laughter. This is your time. This is your day. Come quickly. Come quickly. Those who fell to the floor, come. Those who did not fall, not everybody will fall. Those who did not fall, but they know that God had taken away their sickness, their affliction. Can you come? <laughs> A woman came for me to pray for her to be pregnant. I prayed. The next week, she returned and said, pray again. I, I don't feel anything. Pray again. And I asked her to go for her doctor. The doctor said she was already one month pregnant. There are many of you that God has already healed. Amen. I don't know if you know who you are in the presence of God. You are an important person. Can somebody count for me? Come and raise. Raise your hand. Want to count? Let God know you want to be counted. I was speaking at the Assemblies of God Church in Ohabian, in Abba. I said to the whole crowd, everybody stand up. One cripple tried to stand. I said, my friend, I did not include you. Sit down. He said, sir, you did not include me, but I included myself. I have suffered more than enough. Today, I'm going to stand up. <laughs> and he said to Satan, enough is enough. He has no right to harass you. He has lost the right to humiliate you. I'm going to speak tomorrow and declare that good health shall be your gift. Yeah. And then tomorrow I will show you that this your hand is a hidden instrument. When I lay it on myself, miracles happen. You also can use your hand to bring about your healing and deliverance and promotion and lifting. Oh, there are people from London who are watching. They want me to include them. They come and become Nigerians now. What are they doing in London? How many do we have? Three hundred and twenty-five persons. Come. Oh. 
How many of you were here when this miracle happened? How many of you were here? More than that. There are people in the gallery. With How me. many of you were here or you were brought from outside? Those who were here, can I have you raise up your hand? Come on, give God a good clap of you. 300 and... 300 and... Why don't we say to God, You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Father, everyone who is part of this service tonight, grant him or her peace on every side of his life. What he or she may be looking for will start now to look for him or her. Father, every stone thrown at anybody here shall become his or her stepping stone to greatness. <laughs> Father, every voice that speaks against anybody here shall speak no more. <laughs> Father, fight your people's battles. <laughs> a man who has a living God does not fight his battles. So fight for us fight for us Amen. beginning tonight no poison no charm Amen. no affliction Amen. will touch any one of us Amen. father let an angel be assigned to each one Amen. and let the angel fight the battles of your people Amen. tonight when your children shall sleep, it shall be healing sleep. Amen. Restoration sleep. Amen. Father, rub your Holy Ghost oil upon their hands. Amen. Whatever they shall lay their hand to do shall prosper. Amen. Men who mock them shall mock them no more. Amen. 
men who ask them, where is your God tonight? May you, my father and God, introduce them to their enemies. Peter was locked up when he started to introduce him the gate opened on his own. The iron broke into pieces. Then his enemies knew he was not an ordinary person. I declare, let each one be introduced to his enemies. Amen. Most importantly, bless your people with happiness. Amen. Satan will not let us be happy. Amen. But beginning tonight, we shall be happy. We owe ourselves happiness yeah. and we shall be happy. Yeah. Nobody can make us unhappy without our consent. Yeah. I will not listen to any enemy. Yeah. We have been redeemed by God. We are of the redeemed of the Lord. Yeah. Therefore, goodness and mercy, yeah. happiness and joy, yeah. prosperity and promotion, yeah. Good health and long life yeah. shall be our gift and portion. Yeah. It shall be ours. Yeah. In the name of the Father, yeah. and of the Son, yeah. and of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Oh God, oh God, don't be, you are walking away with your wife. Don't walk before we say the closing prayer. So that God will protect you. How many of you still enjoy your healing? Let me see you raise up your hand. Can you just say, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Number two, please listen to me. Never you say again, I have no one to help me. This God is your father. He's your helper. When you say, no boy, I have no one to help, you're disgracing him. Beginning tonight, when people ask you how are things, the Bible says, speak of those things which are not as though they are, and they shall come to pass. Every time that they're calling from London, every time my friend come from, uh, my classmate come from U.S. and ask me, Oma, how are things? And I say, fantastic. They get angry. Uma, what is there in Nigeria to make your life fantastic? Hey, we live a, the life of heaven here on earth. God takes care of us. Beginning tonight, stop saying I have no one to help me. But this God is your father and your helper. He is the only one whose promises cannot change. He is the only great promise keeper. He has promised to be with you, to fight your battles, to make sure you live a fulfilled life. And I declare it shall be so. Please, those who want particular blessings upon their families, give up your dinner tonight or eat half of it. I want God to touch your family. That family must become a distinguished family. Those who mock you shall celebrate you. Those who say, who is his father? They will now know that God is your father. Are you hearing me? Eh? You will not age a disgraced person. You will be a distinguished person. The best said there is no kind in your family. By my spoken word, by the time we end the service tomorrow and uh, Sunday, this God, <laughs> you must hear this testimony. A young man I prayed for came back and said, God has opened how many refineries? Three. And that he wants to give me 30 what? 13 billion naira. And that God asked me not to buy cars again. Anything I want a car, I should just tell him he'll bring the car. Tell me, Grace. <laughs> I am saying this to say by my spoken word, destiny helpers Hallelujah. shall follow you. Yeah. Thank you Jesus. Stop.
Stop cursing yourself. I, I get angry when I hear believers say, I am suffering. I am suffering. You will not suffer again. And please, learn how to smile like a happy person. Some of you smile like you died yesterday. Nobody buried you. That's why you're still on the road. Learn how to let your smile provoke your enemies to anger. If you want your enemy to die quickly, learn how to smile seven times a day. A man said to me, oh man, here in New York, I hate you. You preach and laugh. Anyway, he's now dead. Learn how to be happy. How many of you are happy you belong to Christ? Are you sure? Yeah. But some of you don't know how to smile. Practice laughter. The Bible says laughter is the best medicine for the body. Raise up your hand. Let the chairman for the night come and dismiss us. Raise up your hand. Can you please close your eyes? Thank God for this night. Tell him you'll be here tomorrow. And you'll be here on Sunday. This is your life. We are entering into a new year. You'll be entering with great promises. And great miracles. You will borrow money no more. You owe no more. You will beg for money no more. The blessings of God shall follow you everywhere you go. That is the promise of the Bible. Therefore, raise your hand and thank him who loves you and gave his life for you. Let's pray.